Today we're going to learn how to make a GUI project using Eclipse and Java. I've already set up my project called GUI project. I've created a little package called create.gui. It is a Java class string frame. So it'll properly be used. I'm going to have it extend JFrame. So to do that, I type in here, I type in JFR and I click on browse and it automatically right here brings up JFrame. I double click on it and automatically as you can see here, it says my super class is javax.swing.jframe. And I go ahead and hit finish. As you know, a JFrame is the tool we use to actually hold a window. It has that level X in the corner so we can close it. It has the maximize, all that fun stuff. Here is my code. So public class string frame extends JFrame. It's great, it's wonderful, and it does absolutely nothing right now. I'm going to close it. I'm going to go over here on my package explorer. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to choose open with. And instead of choosing the Java editor, which is its default, I'm going to choose the window builder editor. You can see that with a little J in the corner. By choosing the window builder editor, we are able to make it so we can actually design the GUI for this framework. By opening it with window builder, I have down here at the bottom, I have a source tab and I have a design tab. And here is my design window. I'm building on a Mac, so I have the Mac look and feel by default. We can add things to this right here and the code is immediately going to be transferred automatically to our source tab. Now, to make this more proper, I have to add a couple things. I'm going to quit create a quick little panel here. Right click again, go to new, go to class, and this is going to be my string panel. And my string panel is going to extend jpanel. And again, we have that super class javax.swing.jpanel. And I'm going to close it again on this and open it using the window builder. Open with window builder editor and I now have my design window. Brings me the code, lets me see it right there, I can design that. And I don't like this boring gray background. I find that to be very, very boring. Let's change that. Over here in the properties section on the bottom left corner, I can make changes. I click on the little uh, dash right here, it'll bring up all the little pop-up. I have my built-in AWT colors, I have my system colors, I have my swing colors, I have named colors, and I have web safe colors. Now, all I've done is change the background to be this color. I've not done anything else. I click on the source tab, and I have now a set background, passing a new color, and it has that information. Now, this is great, this is wonderful. However, we can do a better organization on this. And so, in my class, we want to make this look a bit nicer. And so, to set up our GUI, we make a setup panel method. And it's going to be private because the panel is only seen by the panel itself. And so, it's going to be a private method. So, it can only be seen inside the object. It's a void method because it gives us no value back. And it's called setup panel. That's called inside the constructor. But the magic of using the window builder is I can take it out of that, put it here inside the setup panel method where I can have all the panel setup information and instead just call setup panel in my constructor. And through the magic of the window builder editor, I click over here in the design, it reparses the information and it still has the correct settings all reflected right here. That way I can make changes to it inside my code or inside the GUI and it's reflected nicely. Now I have this string panel right here, it extends J panel, that's great, that's wonderful. I've saved it. I'm going to make an instance of that for my string frame. So I have a private, because my data members of an object should be private. It is a string panel, and I'll call it current panel. And inside my constructor I'll say current panel is a new string panel. And that'll set up right there, and I want to set up my frame. And so I'll make a setup frame method as well. It's again a private method because it belongs to the class. And it's called setup frame. And inside my setup frame, I'll do this dot set content pane. And I'm going to pass it current panel. I click on design. And the background is going to be purple already with listed as content panel, even though I've not done any design code on there. It will parse it out. And magically, we have a purple background and current panel is listed as the information that belongs to that in my components window. And so by using the window builder editor as our tool, we're able to make our GUI design happen much more effectively. So I'll save that. 
And as you can see, nothing's on there. Let's add a button to my string panel. I have my background set. I create a test button, a test text area. I have my current layout set. And then after I've created all of my new objects, I call my setup panel. We have to make sure we create the objects first before we add them, because we add a null, we can't see it. So we have to make sure that they exist first, hence the new whatever. And then after setting it being new, we then call our setup panel. In our setup panel, we add our layout. We add the buttons to the layout so we can see them. And then we click on the design tab. We have our stuff right there. So I can move my button, move it up here to the center. Takes a couple seconds. And look, it's there in the middle. I can make it so it's in the middle of my screen by using its lovely little center horizontally. And center it vertically as well. I go look at my source. And as you can see, it throws that in instantly into the constructor. But we want that to happen after we set it up. So I'm going to take that code out of currently out those constraints. And I will add that inside my setup panel method. And it'll still work the same. I go to my string frame, which we were playing with earlier, already inside my frame, already taken care of, already properly manipulated. By setting it up like this and using that window builder editor, we we're able to edit the code both on a GUI level as well as immediately on a code level and make the code look nice as well as the picture or the image itself look nice as well. One of the ways we do that, again, is by creating a separate method that will do that layout management work. I called mine setup panel and I call that method in the constructor. I have to create all my objects still. I want all my objects in my declaration section. If I do this simply by using the GUI builder, it will not make them available for the entire object. It will only make them available for certain methods. So it's best to structure your code first here in the code side and then go to your design window, move things around as you want it, and then after you've put, uh, set things up the way you want them, you take and adjust those all into your setup panel method because you only want the GUI to take care of itself. And so you set up right here, and this way you can keep your constructor as a clean set of instructions and have it call that setup panel method. You can further clean it up by having it set up the panel and then set up your layout. That's also a valid way of doing this. Before you can add buttons to your structure, you have to first set a layout manager. In class, we've been using the spring layout. There are, however, other layouts available, and those are all listed right here in your layout section of your GUI builder. The spring layout just makes it so you can have it spring away from everything and have it being relative to all the sizes and stuff of what's being used. And that's one of the reasons we were using it in class. But this program still needs a runner. In my string frame, I'm going to make a, that setup frame method, or I have that set content pane. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the size, this dot set size, and I want this to be 500 by 500, this dot set visible. And let's make a quick little runner. So on this, to make a runner, just like normal, this, make a new Java class. It has a public static void main, public void start. And I will take that set size, set visible to true, and put it inside the start. That way we're having that all ready to go. The constructor sets everything up. And I go to my GUI runner. And inside here, I just take my normal method.